Wow, that is literally one of the scariest aviation videos that I have seen this year. Okay, now this video became viral a few days ago. Um, someone leaked this. It went out through a couple of different YouTube channels, then out onto Facebook and everywhere in the world. It's been seen and downloaded and commented on millions of times. And that's why I choose to do this reaction video. Okay, so I want to highlight a few really, really important safety items based on this video. Okay. And um, I want to be absolutely honest that I am not a glider pilot myself. So in preparation for this video, I've been in contact with a couple of gliding instructors that have given me some insight into what it is that we're about to see. So some of the points that I'm going to raise here uh, about gliders and how to fly gliders comes from them not from me, okay? But there are several aspects of this that can be applied both to how to fly VFR uh, with, a, with a single engine aircraft, but also how you're supposed to work in a multi-crew cockpit and how you're supposed to work together. Okay, this video is about four minutes long. There's a couple of things that you should be looking out for. So uh, what we're seeing is a TG-1000 glider. Um, it's a two-seater glider where there's a student pilot who's sitting in the front and a instructor pilot in the back. To the left of the cockpit you can see a blue handle that's a speed brake handle that raises um, a couple of basically tabs up on the wings that, that you know acts as uh, air brakes to slow the aircraft down specifically off the landing or if they're very high and they want to get down. Uh, in front you can see the instrument panel. Now this is a very basic instrument panel. Um, there is a, a variometer which is showing if the aircraft is climbing or descending, bang in the center. Then you have a altimeter out to the right, an airspeed indicator to the left. And you can also hear a, a kind of a beeping sound throughout the video. Now that beeping sound is also a variometer. It's telling you if it's beeping, it's telling the pilots that they're in a ascent, a climb. And if it's going into that kind of low pitched tune, then it's showing a descent. And that's because gliding, obviously, is a fantastic visual sport. Like most of the pilots are supposed to be able to fly based on what they feel and what they can see outside. And they might be looking for updrafts on the clouds, for example. And then it's helpful to actually hear whether or not they're climbing or descending, especially when there's very small tendencies. So, so before we start looking then, um, there's also a string. People, a lot of people have been asking about the string and that string is just to give a visual indication of whether or not the aircraft is turning coordinated. So um, if it's banged straight down the middle, it means that the aircraft is turning coordinated, they're using enough rudder and so on when they're um, turning. And if it's going out to one side or the other, they're not that coordinated. Okay. So when you're flying a glider, you need, because you don't have an engine, you need to be able to keep yourself airborne as long as possible. You can do that in several different ways. Um, you can fly, for example, on up updrafts under small cumulus clouds. You know, when it's really nice summer weather outside, there are these air pockets that lifts up from the ground and they go up until they form a cumulus cloud. And that means that under those cumulus clouds, there tends to be an updraft. And that's why you see sometimes that uh, gliders are kind of curving around under these clouds to try to catch these updrafts and stay up as long as possible. There's also something called wave flying that you can do over big mountain ranges, but you can also do this, right? This is ridge flying. And what they're utilizing here is the fact that you have wind that's coming and blowing towards a, a small mountain ridge. Now, in this case, they have the mountain ridge on their left-hand side and you have the wind coming on the right-hand side. And as the wind is facing up towards the ridge, it has to go up it, right? It means that there's an updraft on the upwind side of the ridge. And if you're flying a glider and you can put yourself just in that updraft, it means that you will be continuously kind of riding it, just like a surfer on a wave, going down this ridge and keeping yourself up and even climbing on it, okay? Now, the, the downside of ridge flying is that sometimes, if the air is moist enough, something called orographic clouds can be formed on just over the ridge. And that's because um, when this air is blowing towards the ridge and it's full of moisture and it's getting pushed upside, it means that it's going to cool down. Anyone who's been out walking on a mountain, for example, will know that um, the air gets cooler and cooler the higher up you go. If you have air with moisture in it and it cools down, 
at some point, which we call the dew point, um, it's going to start forming moisture. It's going to start forming um, clouds, basically. It, it condensates. And that's where you have these orographic clouds forming, right? So that's why you have a nice clear weather on the right-hand side of the picture and clouds on the left-hand side. So let's just have a look at this now. So right now, this is looking great. They have a nice clear area to the right where they can go. And to the left, they're fairly close to the clouds here. Um, according to the glider instructors I've been talking to, this is a little bit too close to comfort. All right? But it's still not bad. If you can hear the variometer is beeping, it means that they're climbing. You can see the altimeter is showing just over 4,000 feet. And they're turning to the right. As soon as they're getting too close to the clouds, they're turning to the right. So, so one thing that you have to do when you're doing this ridge flying is you have to be constantly crabbing in towards the wind. That's because you want to make sure that you stay out in this updraft. If you are not careful and you start paralleling, as in you put your nose parallel to the, uh, to the ridge, well then you will be in the air that's pushing you towards the ridge. So eventually the aircraft is going to go up the top of that um, wave and then potentially into cloud and on the other side of the ridge there's going to be a down draft, right? So you're going to be pushed down. So as you're flying along here you need to be crabbing into the wind just like I explained to you when we talked about crosswind takeoffs and crosswind landing. You need to put the nose in towards the wind in order to track alongside of the ridge. If you put it in towards the parallel of the ridge, you're going to be pushed aside. You see they're discussing where they're going to turn in order to get out if they need to. They're still climbing slightly above 4,100 feet at the moment. And now the instructor says, we're going to fly right through there, so that's okay. Now that's an indication that they are, they're getting a little bit too close to these clouds, all right? So they're discussing that they can fly through, probably through a little part of the cloud in order to come out into uh, a nice um, clear side on the other side, okay? But it's an indication that it's a little bit too close. I also want to have want you to look at how the student is flying. You see he's flying with his thumb and his index finger. That's good. It means that he's relaxed, the aircraft is trimmed and he's happy with the situation. Still climbing away. They're now at 4,300 feet climbing. Turning a little bit right to be paralleling the, uh, the ridge. But here here something happens. Now here is a clear movement to the left, right? The, the glider was nicely in a crab angle and now it's turning a little bit to the left. So I'm not sure if they are aware of it at this point, but here is where the problems probably start, okay? Because now they are in paralleling the ridge and being pushed in towards the clouds. Yeah. See, that's a split yeah. second of a decision. And as you can see here now, the picture starts to change, right? Now they're starting to have more clouds, both on the left and on the right. So that's limiting their options. Remember, they don't have an engine on this aircraft. They need to be able to find a way out quickly if they need it. And you can also hear here how, how the sound of the variometer is changing. Right? They have gone out of the climb and now they're in a small descent and you can also see that on the instrumentation that the variometer is now pointing downwards. Yeah. Saying things like it should be out this way which shows that they're starting to lose situational awareness here and they're now descending. Now from the pointing where to go we should go out there they have a little bit of an opening there now the problem is that they're constantly descending so what might look like a nice way out might not be a nice way out as they're descending into the clouds below um, so right now they're in a quite bad situation okay they're in between the clouds they don't have a clear way out of it and they're trying to sort out what their options are Mm 
that's the variometer saying that they're in a fairly heavy descent. Apparently, in this area, the terrain is at about 3,000 feet. And now they're in cloud. Okay. So why is that so bad then? Well, the fact is that we, people, we were not built to be flying, flying machines inside of clouds. We were built to be running around on the savannah, all right, looking out for saber-toothed tigers, stuff like that. So our balance system, our vestibulary system, which is situated in our inner ear, is basically a series of tubes filled with liquid and with little hairs, right? Those uh, hairs will tell our brain if we're tilting our head, for example, up and down, and it will tell us if the ground is down and the sky is up. Right. That's, that's how we humans work. But of course, if you're flying an aircraft, well then you are subject to g-forces and accelerations and decelerations. And our vestibulary system, our balance system, is not equipped to understand that. Right. So that's what we're using when we, when we practice in full flight simulators, when you know, airline pilots fly in full flight simulators. Those simulators, they are pitching forward and backward and to the sides to simulate accelerations and deceleration for us. And when we're sitting in, our, in that simulator and we see a runway straight ahead and we suddenly feel that we're being pushed into our seat, our brain is telling us that you're accelerating. What's actually happening is that the, uh, the, the simulator is pitching up. But it goes to show that we cannot trust our senses. Our senses can be fooled. On top of that, when you're in a cloud, it's completely white, right? No matter where the sun is, it's completely white because the light is being dispersed. So it's like sitting inside one of those photo light boxes. You have no idea what's up and down based on what you see. It's just white. So now you're in a situation where you, don't, you can't see where you are, you can't feel where you are. So now you need something to tell you where you are. And this is where it becomes important that you're flying an aircraft that has the instrumentation needed to tell you that. And one crucial instrument is an artificial horizon. Now, you need to have an instrument in straight in front of you that tells you what's up, down, how much you're banking and how much you are pitching. This glider does not have that. On top of that, even if it would have it, even if they had an artificial horizon, you need to be trained and certified to fly inside of a cloud. So fly with what we call instrument meteorological conditions, IMC. And that's because even if you see everything in front of you, and you have your artificial horizon, you have your airspeed indicator, your IVSI, your, um, your heading indicator, and your altimeter, if you are not properly trained, you are still likely to follow your senses, okay? So this means that you need to go through uh, instrument training in order to, to do this. And the instrument training in the first couple of hours is gonna tell you, just look at the instrument. Because your brain is going to tell you that you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But you have to look at your instrumentation and say, that's right, that's right. Trust the instrument, trust the instruments all the time. And once you've done that for a few hours, it becomes second nature and you, you just do it. But before that, even VFR pilots that are trained to fly with this kind of instrumentation will still only last a few seconds inside of a cloud before they are completely disoriented. Now, a few things that you can look for in a situation like this is you need to look at the instrumentation you have. So you should look at your VSI, if you're climbing or descending, look at your airspeed, see if that's increasing or decreasing, because that gives you some hints. Now, what you can also do is you can listen to the sound outside. So if the sound is increasing, it means generally that the airspeed is increasing. If it's decreasing, you're likely slowing down. So let's see what happens. They've just entered a cloud now and you can kind of see that the student pilot is holding a little bit tighter grip on the control joke or the control mm -hmm. stick here. Let's see. They're descending quite quickly now. You hear how the noise is going up? There is where they came out on the bottom of this orographic cloud. Fortunately, it was really, really close to terrain. So you can see how the student pilot is now taking a firm grip of the, um, of the stick. He's also reaching for that speed brake handle. That's a normal reaction 
you know, they're getting very close to the ground at a very high airspeed here. The initial reaction is to slow down, but fortunately he fights the urge and he doesn't pull that because that would have gotten them in an even trickier situation. But now they're in a fairly steep turn, close to terrain. And let's see the next thing that happens here. Pulling. So that is a very high G turn. They were in a steep bank turn and it pulled on the uh, control stick. That is going to G load the wings. If you're not careful when you do something like that, you can actually G stall the wings. Um, but it was enough G's here for the GoPro camera to be flipped upside down in the stand. And they're also starting to talk about they're in trouble now, right? The instructor knows that this is very bad. If you're getting close to the ground like these guys are doing and you pull the stick out through a turn like that and you keep pulling it, of course, now you're going to start climbing again and you're going to potentially climb back up into a cloud. Once again, you will lose your coordinates where you are. And also a glider doesn't have an engine, so you can't keep climbing forever. You are going to at some point or another um, run out of airspeed and potentially stall the aircraft. And if you're not careful then and if you're still doing heavy maneuvering, you can end up in a spin as well. So let's see. Whenever you hear someone say, where are we in a cockpit, that's not good. They're descending again. Okay, so that's exactly what happened. Um, now he calls that they're in the spin. It's impossible to see from this camera angle whether they're actually in a spin, but they were at least in a stall there and the student pilot push nose down and call, I have control, I have control, continue to push the stick down to gain airspeed and continue to fly the aircraft. Now, I've seen a lot of vitriol um, towards these pilots and towards the student pilot and what he's doing and especially about him calling, I have control. What you have to understand here is what he's calling is not, I have control of the situation. He's calling, I have control of the aircraft. And that is crucial. You're flying two pilots, both of you have access to the controls, someone is going to be have to be the one flying. Okay, If you have two pilots trying to do opposite things, bad things will happen. So the student pilot who's sitting in the front of the aircraft, who have better views, you can see further in front than the, uh, the instructor in the back, takes control of the aircraft because it's the safest thing to do. And you can also hear how the instructor is fairly easily relinquishing control. That you have control, you have control. Now this is good airmanship, all right? This, um, this, I'm really impressed actually by the student here who is sitting with a much senior colleague who's also his instructor and takes control of the aircraft, puts the nose down, makes sure that the aircraft is flying and now is maneuvering out of the situation, right? This is good airmanship that we're seeing right now. Not throughout the whole video, but right now. And that's the end of the uh, of the video. From what we know, these two pilots managed to get out of this ridge and they landed safely on a the field. They were not hurt. But obviously, this enormous amount of media attention and social media attention that we're getting uh, have put them in a really bad spot. Okay, so there are a few things that I want to get out of this video and I want you, especially if you are a glider pilot or a VFR pilot or a, you know, a pilot like me flying airlines to get out of this video. Number one is no one respects your meteorology. Understand what kind of situations that you might get yourself into if you're flying close to certain types of clouds, okay? This is important no matter what you're doing in aviation. Now, I keep stressing that you need to really know your subjects that you are studying during your ATPL theory, for example. Meteorology is one of them. And if you don't understand, for example, how orographic lift is created, how orographic clouds are created and what happens on the other side, well then you can get yourself into a situation like this unknowingly. So knowledge 
is one of the pilot core competencies and out there knowledge about your aircraft and its limitations the meteorology the aerodynamics that you're flying all of that is shown in this video okay so make sure that you have the proper knowledge and the proper respect for it number two always always give yourself enough margins okay so we have different rules for flying in VFR, which is Visual Meteorological Flight Rules, and IFR, Instrument Meteorological Flight Rules. Okay? There are reasons for that. In VFR rules, there will be a minimum distance to a cloud, right? You're allowed to fly a certain amount of, of distance below a cloud or to the side of cloud. Make sure that you follow those because those rules are built so that you have a bit of a margin so that you don't get yourself into a situation like this and if you are to fly through a cloud even if you see just a small cloud somewhere and you think yeah, that would be cool to just fly through that don't unless you have the proper instrumentation in the aircraft and you have the proper training and certification to do so do not get yourself in imc make sure that if you see that you're going out and you're flying in marginal conditions it's better to stay home all right it you don't want to find yourself in a situation like this for the reasons that i talked about and number three don't think that this won't happen to you all right i've seen so much vitriol towards these pilots i've seen so many comments about how they shouldn't be flying how they shouldn't be in a cockpit now if you think that you won't get yourself in a situation like this you're wrong all right the only thing that these two pilots did which by the way looks like good proficient pilots with quite a bit i would say over average skills in most cases is a few lapses of judgment all right it's a couple of milliseconds where they turned a little bit more to the left than they should a little bit more in towards the cloud those lapses of judgment can happen to anyone Okay, it can happen to me, it can happen to you. The key here is to sit with so much margins, right? So that those lapses in judgment, even if you make a small mistake, it will not affect the safety of the flight. This is why when we fly in, uh, with passenger aircraft in commercial operation, we have standard operating procedures. And those standard operating procedures would tell us, for example, how much crosswind we're allowed to land with how bad visibility we can go in and shoot and approach with. And if we see that the weather is outside of those limits, we won't even try it. We will divert to an airport where the weather is better. We will not go more than a certain distance from a storm cloud or from an active cell or start an approach when a um, thunderstorm is close to an airport. And that's because we know that in most cases you could probably get away with that. You could probably do it, but then you don't have the margins. And any lapse in judgment could get yourself into a situation like this, which is really dangerous. So in commercial operations, you follow your SOPs, you get yourself some extra margins. And even with some, some mistakes that will happen inevitably, you will still not be in any danger because the margins are big enough. Get yourself those margins yourself when you're out flying. All right. So that's it. Uh, this video I am watching right now is from 737 Aviation. I don't know if uh, he or she is the original owner of this video. Uh, this video has, like I said, been posted on thousands of websites all over um, the internet. But do think about these things before you start commenting on them. All right. Anyone can get some themselves into a situation like this if you're not very careful. Now, that's all I have, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope that you have considered to subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to see more really beautiful videos about the wonderful world of gliding, because I personally think that, you know, starting with gliding is an absolutely wonderful way to learn about aviation, to learn about meteorology, to learn about stick and rudder skills. And if you want to see some really, really beautiful footage, about how it's like to fly gliders well then check out the channel pure glide i'm going to link to it up here um, it's a small channel i think that he deserves much more subscribers so check out the channel and tell me which one of the videos that you think were the most impressive one from his channel in the description below oh and before you go 
maybe you've noticed that I have some new merchandise um, on. So I'm constantly updating my merchandise store and tomorrow is Black Friday, 27th of November. So from tomorrow until the Monday, the 30th of November, we are going to have a huge blowout sale on my merch store. It's going to be 50% off all of my merchandise. So if you go tomorrow and you enter the code CYBER, then you will get 50% off everything. It starts from midnight tonight, Central European time, until midnight on Monday. So go and get yourself a nice sweater or a cap or a coffee cup or whatever it is that you like. Check it out. Let me know if there's something you think I should add to the merch store. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.